Hi everybody, my name is Shane and we're in the hospital. Today is day two. So Hunter was born yesterday. He's literally right next to me. Um, he's finally like did a big poop. He just ate. Um, so now he's resting. So now it's time to have some lunch. So I ended up door dashing <clears throat> McDonald's over here. Pull you guys in a little bit closer. I ended up door dashing McDonald's. So TJ is downstairs at the moment going to meet the guy. Um, hello, honey. So I'm going to kind of do um, answering questions sort of video. Um, as well as like just having my lunch. And I'm, we're going to open some gifts that were left for us as well. But if you guys have any other questions at the end of this video because this is not real time I can't ask you guys at the moment but if you go to my community tab and find this video thumbnail you can leave any further questions that you have there and I'll be happy to make like a part two um, answering any un unanswered questions once we get home and get settled and everything so with that being said myself Tanner looks nuts because I haven't been home so it kind of looks like I feel like I look like I have a mustache but I know my face is like really really discolored but it's just because you know I'm not self tanning at the moment so um, but I'll show you guys so we have this little bag here we haven't had a lot of visitors to be honest with you which I don't mind I don't mind it being quiet but we have this bag here and I know this came from TJ's sister um, but first, this is not Hunter, by the way. This is my nephew, Royce. Um, he was born in November. But it's just, it's more for TJ. But it's just, it has a really cute thing about his work on it and stuff. So, really cute picture of him. And I'm glad that I have a picture of him because I, I haven't seen him in so long. And it will be nice to have in our house. And then she also got us an almond candle. Um, it smells really, really nice. So... And you guys know how much I love candles, so that was really sweet. And then there is just some candy in here as well. Um, we have lifesavers and some Skittles. Okay, next I'll show you. This came from my brother and Amber. So we have a teddy bear um, for Hunter, of course. <laughs> oh, someone calling me. Okay, little hiccup with DoorDash there. Um, but yeah, we have the teddy bear for him, and then we have a card, which I haven't even opened yet, so I'm going to open that real quick. Oh, so it says, those little feet. <laughs> and then it says, we'll be following in some pretty amazing footsteps. Enjoy every moment with your new baby son. Congrats, Shayna and TJ. We love you guys so much. Wishing Hunter a healthy delivery. <laughs> I can't read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> love Michael and Amber. Very sweet. And I love the card too. So I'm going to hang on to that. And then um, they also got me a little... Oh, I don't want to spill it. <clears throat> they got me a little... <laughs> um, vase of flowers. And I love the vase. It's super dainty. It's super cute. It has a little baby bow on it and it says welcome baby hunter love michael and amber so super duper cute i can't wait to bring that home and then i have one more bag over here <coughs> and i believe this just has um they're like the baby uh like robes oh my goodness okay so it's two of them they're just unzippered but they don't have sleeves but they're just like the little, like, I don't want to call them pouches, but I can't think of another word. But they're like, I love these things. These are amazing. I, oh, I, I'm telling you, they're like my favorite thing in the world. So, but we got a bigger size and then we got, and then we got this. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm trying not to cough. We got a little bit of a smaller size too. So that was everything. But TJ will be up in a second. The door dasher and him couldn't find each other. I'm allowed to order one entree um, a day from here. Otherwise, I have access to the cafe at all times. So I figured, well, I was, I'm like, why don't we just have like a small lunch and then, um, you know, I'll order an entree or something for dinner. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm just going to wait till he gets back up here. And Miss Ella, she left her little toy with me last night. Um, I, I found it under the bed. 
You good? Shalom. <laughs> Hi. Hey, buddy. He called me. He's like, I don't see him. Uh, right That's after you man. called me. He totally blended in. Like, not even, didn't even look like a DoorDasher. Not much. I ordered. I've never seen that before. Mick delivery. You guys ever seen this before? Oh, that's weird. What did you end up ordering? Steak and cheese. Steak and cheese. Okay, sorry. TJ's food is here. Um. His mom called, so it was, it was a, kind of a longer phone call, but I went on Google and I just kind of looked up like common birth questions. A, I'll tell you just his generic um, information. So he was born on January 29th, 2020 at 1.19 p.m., so one in the afternoon. Um, he weighed in like half an ounce under nine pounds, so we just call it we've been calling it nine pounds um he was 20 inches long i'm trying to see what other information so so i got induced this time as you guys at this point would know um i had made the decision this, this i made the decision to get induced because i was at full term um i actually gave birth to him at 40 weeks and I had explained, and I can't, I'm not going to, I know I'm not going to make this make sense to everyone because you, you don't, you didn't feel what I felt, but I just felt that it was time for him to be here. Um, my body wasn't like working with me anymore. Um, I was exhausted, like beyond exhausted. I couldn't take care of my daughter the way that I needed to. It was just, it was over and it was done with. So I had gone to my OBG um, on the 28th, the Tuesday before, and I got their professional opinion, and because everything has been really healthy and really great, um, I was really low risk for like any sort of like anything bad happening. Um, so I, I chose to get um, an induction. So. What that consisted of is we got to the hospital at 7, they get, got us a room, we signed in, filled out, um, or like answered a bunch of questions. They gave me bracelets and stuff that would eventually have matched Hunter's when he was here. He's stirring a little bit, so I'm just keeping my eye on him. And then they, it took about an hour, um, close to an hour and a half to get me set up, settled in. I had a tiny bit of breakfast this morning, which they said it was okay to eat. Um, I had a lot of ice chips. Um, they got me hooked up to an IV, which went in my arm there. Um, and they started the dosage at a really low dose. Um, I forget what the drug's name is. It's like Pro Prozine or something like that. Um, and every half hour, they were gonna gradually up the dosage if I wasn't like contracting or anything um, when you lay down in bed you have like they strap two monitors to your belly and this happened with induction and without induction one is to monitor the baby's heartbeat and the other one is to monitor your contractions they checked my blood pressure regularly. I really didn't feel any crazy contractions in the beginning. Um, even when the monitor was still saying that I was having them, I didn't feel like I was at all. Um, it wasn't until, so I was hooked up about 8.30. It wasn't until about probably 11 o'clock where I started to kind of feel uncomfortable. Um, and slowly but surely the contractions got longer. I tried to stay on my feet as much as I could because I knew I'd be like in the bed for a long time. So I tried walking around. Now that I, ha I had an IV, so I had to walk around with like a little, like the, the pole holding the IV bag. Um, but I also used a yoga ball. I didn't use the bath this time like I did with my daughter. Um, but I used a yoga ball. I walked around. I try to switch positions regularly because lying down was really putting a lot of stress on my back. Basically when it was 
the contractions were getting really, really bad, my doctors would help me just kind of breathe through them. You're fine, T. They would help me breathe through the contractions and then my nurse basically told me, like, tell me when your body feels like it's going to start pushing. Because that's how I felt with Ella. I felt like I had no control over my body, that it was just going to do what it was going to do. So eventually I got back in bed. I didn't feel comfortable walking around anymore. I got back in bed and that's when the contractions like really, really, really started. I laid down on my side to try to relieve my back. Um, but you know, when I finally told him like, I'm going to start pushing, like my body's going to push the doctor, the labor doctor came in. Um, I had a really, really painful experience with this one. And I think what happened is when I started pushing, he wanted to come out, but the umbilical cord got wrapped around his neck. So as I'm pushing, the umbilical cord is preventing him from coming out. So he almost came like part, part of the way out. And then I had to stay like that until my next contraction where I had to push again. It was... I've like forgotten about it right now because I think it was so traumatic about how bad it actually hurt. But I'm telling you, if Ella's pregnancy was like this one, I don't know if we would be having baby number two. It was so incredibly painful. I was like screaming at the nurses to help me. Like I felt like I just needed someone to like pull him out. Um, but the doctor would tell me to stop pushing. And when he came out with a cord wrapped around his neck, she worked so extremely fast, but she clamped the cord on either side and then cut it off. Um, at the moment, I didn't know this was happening because there was so much chaos going on and I was in so much pain. Um, all I heard was him starting to cry, so I thought everything was great. Um, then, you know, later I found out what had, had actually happened. But um, So he had a little bit of bruising on his right eye right under his right eye and a little bit on his shoulder I think just from the whole delivery process so I don't know necessarily if like the induction caused the labor to be more painful or if it was just the fact that the cord had gotten wrapped around um, so that's kind of like how the whole process of getting to the hospital up until his delivery actually happened. Um, TJ was in the room and my mom was in the room. Um, and I kind of knew something was wrong initially because I looked up at both of them and both of them were crying. And you guys don't know my mom on a personal level, but I rarely see her cry. So to see her eyes getting watery, it kind of sent a red flag uh, in my direction. I didn't, I didn't immediately think like, Oh, he's not breathing or oh the cords wrapped around his neck like that that's not what I thought but I, I had a feeling that something could have been wrong Sorry for a loud noises. Yeah, and TJ just they could see you kind of walk in so TJ's having a sub if you can hear that but I feel like every time um, they see TJ on your show he's eating maybe I should stop eating I, this is literally like an eating show although I'm not eating because I, I again I ate through the phone call um, but Okay, one of the questions is what do I need before I go into the hospital? To be honest, you really don't need anything right away unless, like, I guess it wouldn't hurt to have your labor bag with you. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to really need anything until after I get settled in my room. And even today, like, my labor bag is still sitting over there, like, not touched. And it's 12 o'clock on the second day. So you can bring it in. Um, but we're gonna bring in the car seat like later today. You don't need that right away um, Obviously you need it before you leave the hospital, but um, I wouldn't worry about Having a suitcase packed and ready to go before your delivery um, That's the last thing you're gonna be worrying about. How do I know if I'm in labor? This was the most difficult question for me to answer throughout this whole pregnant this particular pregnancy with Ella I was 41 weeks and then I started having contractions so I had a pretty good idea that labor was starting this one I was constantly like is it happening is it not happening I'm not really sure how I'm feeling even when they started the contractions for me with the IV they're like oh you're having a contraction and I'm like really like it really didn't feel like anything 
So it depends completely on the woman, and I hate to say that, but it does. I had my water broken by the doctor, which was not painful, by the way. I thought it would have been, but like it, it was not painful at all. If you have to get that done, don't worry. Um, little uh, like uncomfortable because they have to like go in there, but it wasn't painful. Um, but it just it completely depends, and every time I would call the doctor saying like, "Oh, I lost the plug," or "Oh, I'm like." My, I have severe back pain. They always just told me, just wait for contractions, wait for contractions, wait for contractions. So that's a really hard um, question to answer for you guys. What are good ways to stay comfortable and calm during labor? Um, what we did is, because it was three of us in the delivery room, we just like had conversation. Like we were just... After this, I was going to say, do you want to play that game again? No, we just, we had conversation, we talked about funny things, um, at one point we talked about like putting on music, um, we didn't end up doing that, because at that point I was starting to get really uncomfortable, but just like, I don't know, just not thinking about what's gonna happen, I guess would really help, um, we played like some question games on the phone to keep myself distracted um, just try to keep it like as normal as possible I guess like just pretend like it's another day um, don't overthink about being in pain or you know whatever is going on um, I think that's probably the most comfortable way I mean you're stripped down and put in a robe so like clothing wise you're pretty comfortable um, I wore like a pair of socks with me that reminded me of my daughter and she had made me like a little kitty craft which is in one of my bags um, and I had that on like a night side table so every time I got nervous like I could just kind of look at stuff that reminded me of my daughter and got my mind off of what was gonna happen so maybe bring something from home that makes you feel calm or just reminds you of a happy time. I remember when I first gave blood with my first pregnancy, I brought my daughter's ultrasound pictures. So maybe bring your ultrasound pictures to look at. Um, a good book, anything. Just try to keep it as normal as possible, I guess. This is a question actually for TJ. Oh it says, as a birthing partner, how can I help my partner during labor? Hold on. Okay, TJ, how can you help your partner during labor he we were just talking the the nurse stopped him so I stopped filming for a second he was saying to shut up <laughs> because well here's the thing throughout because I was in so much pain I had the doctor and my mom there was a lot of people in that room but a lot of people were just keep telling me to breathe which is great like they, they truly are being helpful they are reminding me but it's like you're in so much pain that you just want to like have everybody just stop for a second you know what I mean um, I did get some useful instructions to like when the contractions got really bad the doctor told me to breathe or like blow out like I'm trying to blow out birthday candles that helps tremendously but is there anything else that you could help with during labor? Um, don't do what I did the first birth and do what I did the second birth yeah the first don't birth the first birth, TJ was. I mean, we we're both you know, new. I, I don't want to make excuses for it. I was scared. Uh, I was nervous, um, and it wasn't until the very moment that she showed pain and contractions that I realized that 20, 21 years old, twenty years old, that she I was, was about born to be a dad. when you were twenty-one. Yes. And that's when it all hit me. I was about to be a What's dad. What's the thing like a, with your first baby? I don't think it really. It didn't. Oh, it didn't even really register to me what was actually happening. Like, yes, I obviously knew a baby was coming, but, like, I didn't know what to expect. And then, like, as a dad, you're not even going through the pain. You're just witnessing the just pain. Just watching a belly grow, you know? Yeah, like, there was, a, there was a lot of new stuff. So I think as a as the partner in labor, he did much better this time, I think. He was there with me throughout the whole thing. He even cut the cord at one point. Um... That was my goal. I wanted so, to be there, like, a supporting husband should. And for all the yeah. first-timers out there, you know, um, 
I didn't do a good job. I just, I would say if you're a first time parent, like don't beat yourself up for your first reaction because I don't think anyone's going to actually know how you're going to react until you're put on the spot. Like you could say, oh yeah, like I'm going to have no problem staying in the delivery room until it's actually happening. It's a very intense um, life experience and you really don't know how you're going to react to it. So, um, I would say just as a partner, just be as supportive as you can. Just don't be annoying. Like, don't tell your partner what they, like, already know. I'm not saying, like, you did this, but I'm saying, like, as being in the in the bed, I, I don't want to hear the things I already know. Yeah, like, for example, I can see on a screen, like, both you, as you were getting extracted You know what, that, that was heard. helpful, though. You, you, that was it, helpful. It, You're it, like, here's another one. Yeah, the, when, when the <laughs> monitor, it wasn't, though. When the, the monitor, I was saying, um, monitored your contraction. So you could see it rise, rise, rise. It comes to a point, and then your contraction comes down. And then they just get closer and closer together. It was helpful to me, personally, when someone was like, okay, here comes another one, because I was able to steady my breathing and kind of prepare for it instead of being caught off guard. So believe it or not, it might not be for everybody. Some people might just want you to shut up and not yeah. tell them. It, it depends. I would have thought for sure you'd have been like, no kidding, Sherlock. No. <laughs> I no, because sometimes, <laughs> like, it would start rising, and I wouldn't feel anything until it got to, like, up here, and then I'm, like, oh, like, all of a sudden, I was, like, oh, my God, it's, like, coming. Um, but, no, just let your partner get through the pain in whatever way they can. Um, actually, those were all the questions that was on this particular page. Um, I found a couple other questions. How much does it really hurt? I couldn't tell you. Um, there is nothing to compare it to labor birth is kind of its own category I can ex I, yeah I can explain that the the contractions themselves feel like when they get really bad like a vice grip around your waist just squeezing the ever-living hell out of you or like a, a like a boa constrictor just just like I even explained at one point to my mom it feels like somebody like dug their nails into my abdomen and was just twisting stuff around that's what I explained a contraction to be but the actual birthing part there is literally nothing to compare it to it's that painful only a scare anyway but I also went natural though I don't know what it's like to have an epidural I didn't take the gas that they offered I didn't take they have like an IV drip too. I didn't take that, like the only one I took was for the induction. I didn't take any pain medication. And then again, he got stuck because of that umbilical cord. So my first daughter, I said that was easy. Like that, that was so easy. Like yes, it hurt, but it was not what it was with my son. So that, that it's a hard question to answer, but I hope that helps. Does your area really tear during labor? <laughs> yes, yes it does. Um, and some women tear worse than others. I got two small tears, but neither needed stitches, which I was very grateful for because I was already in so much pain. So if you're small enough or if it's like not that big of a deal, they'll just kind of let you take care of it. You just you use the restroom like normal. You just be careful. Um, but yeah, no. And honestly, the bleeding afterwards, like it's much less than Ella's was. Oh, T, get, get it off your shoes, huh? Uh, Put it on the floor. All right. All right, you gotta get some I'll towels. Um, so some women would tear big enough where you would need stitches or something. Um, but the, my recovery with El, uh, with Hunter has been much smoother, less bleeding, I think less tearing as well um, than it did with my first daughter, which is weird because he's bigger. Um, but yes, it really does happen. And it just, it feels like an intense stinging. I got hair in my mouth. It feels like intense burning is what it feels like. To drug or not to drug, that's a question that you gotta answer on your own. I did both of my babies natural. One was much worse than the others, but I wouldn't changed my mind if I knew beforehand how bad it would have hurt so some women swear by the epidural they're like it's awesome like I wouldn't have done it without it so and no judgment either 
either way. I don't care. <laughs> you know, as long as you can give birth to a healthy, happy baby, like nothing else should really matter and no other person's opinion should really matter. They're not the one pushing out your baby. Does any of the deep breathing stuff work? Um, I mean, I was still in a lot of pain. I don't know if the deep breathing is more of just like a distraction. I don't think it actually takes away pain, um, but you know, it definitely helped through like pushing and stuff. Do you yell mean things at the doctors and nurses? <laughs> if so, do you feel ba bad about it? Um, I I've never, I've never sworn at my nurses. Like I've never felt like I needed to. I've never sworn at my my husband or my mom. There, I've sworn out loud. I think I said S O B at one point when I was giving birth, but it wasn't directed at anybody. Um, I was screaming, help me, because he was stuck, and I didn't know what else to do. I got scared. So, I don't know, not in my personal experience. Can your partner ever look at you the same way again? Well, I'd hope so, because we had number two. Yo, you know, no, I'm just <laughs> Excuse me? I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> all right that was all the questions on here so I'm gonna end that for part one like I said if you have any other unanswered questions that I didn't get to or maybe I just kind of forgot about um, just find this thumbnail on a community tab uh, leave your questions there and I'll be happy to do a part two all I know is that I'm super grateful that this whole experience is over I get to take my son home tomorrow morning um, I'm sure he's happy too that this experience is over. Um, now it's just about the recovery and getting back into normal life and adjusting as we go. So thank you guys so much for watching today. Um, my next video will probably, actually I want to try to film a post labor um, like body update. I don't know what to call it at the moment, but um, I like to be real and super open on my channel about most things when it comes to me because I, I have no shame in most things but um, I want to show you guys like what what does my body look like after because that's probably a big question as well so I'll probably film that at some point tomorrow um, but for now I'm gonna go spend some time with my son and my husband we're gonna pick up my daughter in a little bit so thank you guys again for watching if you enjoyed please go ahead leave a thumbs up and while you're down there hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next one bye guys